This was the dream Femi had that fateful Sunday, the day that changed his whole life. The household of God. First Peter four seventeen. Ah. Ah. All you false spirit of confusion, I bind you in Jesus' name. Every evil minister of doubt, I rebuke you. I shatter you in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire fall. Destroy the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I... I, I'm sorry, I woke you up. No, it's okay. I love this prayer. Um, yes, yes. Um, you know I love um, Sunday so much. This is how his life had always been, seeking solutions, but not a savior. Satisfied with superficiality, he rarely considered anything deeply, being content with momentary consolations. But unknown to him, God himself was turning his world upside down for his everlasting good. And this was just the beginning, just like the dream he had.
Is everything set? Uh, yes, sir. Everything is set, sir. Um, I spoke with the technician. He confirmed to me that the generator has been serviced and filled. Uh, also, our lightings have been tested and found them fully functional, without any problem, sir. Good. The sound system. Sir, the directional mics for the choir is all are all in place and properly adjusted. And your personal mic, sir, is working to full capacity and as you always wanted, is new. And the keyboard has also been calibrated and been monitored throughout the service. The instrument specialist assured me. Good. Um, Pastor Femi, the fight report shows a slackening off among the congregation. What do you have to say about this? <clears throat> um, if I may, sir, I can notify the individuals on the report that have been unfit. You better do that. And mind you, you will be responsible for raising the Titan offering during the service this morning. Give them stern warning on what happens to people who don't bring the whole tithe into the storehouse of God. Okay? Yes, sir. We need to see the glory of God this morning. We need to see God's glory here this morning. We need this glory. Let your glory fall. Mm -hmm. Let your glory fall. Oh, my Lord, let your Sing it one more time. Let your glory
constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and covering, we will be content with that. to create a believable scenario and action still speaks louder than words. This is a masterpiece, the stroke of ingenuity. From the church fund and back into the church fund. This was presented as my seed faith in front of everyone. And like you used to say, sir, if your harvest isn't enough, then turn it into a seed. <laughs> Oh, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and give you your peace. The Lord bless thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. People eager for money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. the figures. Okay, just a minute, just a minute, sir. I'm only trying to tell you what happened to me this morning. I, I, I'm not sure how to even explain it. Continue. It was the deepest conviction of sin I'd ever experienced. I, I was heartbroken as I cried to God to forgive me. I confessed my wickedness of trying to use God to get wealth. It's an awful thing. Just like the dream I had this morning. Well, it wasn't happy. It wasn't happy at all. I saw myself plunging into ruin and destruction. I asked the Lord to save me. So, you are saying if God blesses you with riches, you are a sinner, Abby? Fini. Fini, what has come over you? You are not thinking straight. Everything we have hoped for, prayed for, and trusted God for, you are throwing into the wind. I thought something was wrong with you when I saw you this morning. What will Reverend Ben say if he knew about knowing fully where we earn our daily living from the church. Count all things lost for the sake of the cross. For in Christ I have gained all things that can't be lost. I count all things lost for the sake of the cross. For in Christ I have gained The Lord really used it. Mm. Bridger, I'm a sinful man. My stupid tight message on Sunday kept on ringing over and over in my ears. It's like a torture. The whole thing about prosperity, it's like deception. Deception. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't it? Hmm. I'm afraid. It's one of the greatest deceptions that have come upon the church in our time. Kai, Kai, Kai. How many people have I deceived? Father. We bless you for sending forth the light of the glory of the word of God as seen in Jesus. 
evidence in your most excellent word. Lord, we ask that you will open our eyes of understanding more and more, that your word may be a guide unto our feet into your everlasting path. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't carry. I don't carry my Bible about, uh, but um, I have it here in my part. For me, traditional. But all I know is that there is something about you having your Bible around with you. I mean, the hard copy, bro. Femi. Jesus said. You cannot serve God and mammon. There is something about mammon I would like to tell you. Mammon was the name Jesus gave to the first God of prosperity. It is the spirit of wet personified. Jesus directs our hearts onto the things above. While mammon fills us with its filthiness, with the things of the heart. Mammon also fills our heart with spiritual wickedness and deceptions. That is why you cannot serve both. You cannot serve God and money. Oh, mammon. But why have we accepted all these prosperity messages without asking questions? Why? Because we've not been like the Berean Christians. We are too lazy in searching the scripture. Too lazy. I've always listened to whatever my reverend says. No wonder. I am deceived. Prophet, just look at the, the life of the lives of true men of God in the scripture. What was the experience of Paul? Was he living in prosperity? Oh did he emphasize it? I guess I really never thought about it. spoken to me by prophetic revelation about our future. Thus saith the Lord, not many days from now, I shall join you in a holy matrimony, and you, Ben, and you, Suki, shall be husband and wife, and the ye shall be for me an everlasting glory, and for the good of my people, whom I will send you to, with an anointing and blessings, uncountable, as I have decreed, so shall it be, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. <laughs> but how can these things be, since you're a married man? <laughs> Whatever is impossible with man is possible with God, for his word cannot fail. 
he does all things well. And do not fear, for he will make the way plain in good time. May the Lord's will be done. What time is it anyway? It's 11 o'clock, my dear. Uh, I know the Fiji was so engaging. Saps all our energy. Maybe. God spoke to our situation directly. I'm very sure I'm leaving that teaching profession for a managerial role in an Hoi company. Wow, I could feel the presence of God with lots of spirit filled worshippers. The testimonies were amazing, and the miracles, it was wonderful. Did you see the old woman that came to the altar for prayer? No, I don't remember seeing anyone. I, I, I mean, the, the woman which, the withered left hand, old and thin. I don't remember seeing her. She wasn't healed. Eh, maybe she didn't have enough faith. She had faith. In fact, she had faith more than all the reverends at the vigil. But she wasn't healed. She wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have gained all things that can be loved. We have come this morning to give our substance to God. This is offering time. Our Lord Jesus says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The reason for our giving to the Lord is not for us to financially receive in return. It is for us to share with those that are in need. Proverbs 22 verse 16 says, he who oppresses the poor to gather wealth, and he who gives gift to the rich, both come to poverty. Ephesians 4.28 tells us that our giving is to share with those in need, not for our own personal gain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Femi, you may return to your seat. Thank you. Yes. Uh, brethren, it is true that uh, we do not give for selfish reasons, but we give as unto God, as he has commanded in his word. So that at the end of the day, we will hear, well done, faithful servant. The widow of Zarephath gave to the prophet everything that she had, and it multiplied. So also the widow in the New Testament that gave everything and so listen to me people of God our giving must not be self-centered it must just be self-sacrificial and that is why this morning I want you to rise up in your mind in your body and in your spirit and give us unto the Lord hallelujah come and Put your hands in those pockets, put your hands in those bags, and come on and empty it for the Lord. Empty it. Empty your bank accounts for the Lord this morning. And try the Lord, whether I will not open the storehouse and pour out for you a blessing.
I smell trouble. There is trouble. Big trouble. So why don't you do something about it? And what do I do, my dear sister Suki? Buy me a car. <laughs> that is just great. Brilliant solution. Femi sabotages the offerings. And you are here asking me to buy you a car with money that I have not received. We planted a seed. And it's time I reaped the harvest. Hasn't Femi been spouting up to you and other pastors that prosperity isn't biblical? Did it to tell the congregation that the idea of giving so that they might gain from it isn't according to the word of God? And what are you driving at with all this? And haven't you promised for long that there'll be breakthroughs and harvests for planting seeds of faith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't what? I plant a seed of 50,000 naira not too long ago? Uh, don't push this, Suki. Don't push it. I'm not in the mood. Don't you get it yet? What better evidence could there be to prove that seed faith given is from God? Let me drive into church in my brand new car. Femi has been trying to prove to everyone otherwise. And I'll simply be living proof that what he's saying isn't true. But won't everybody know that it's a setup? If I buy you a car, it will just have the opposite effect. That's why it's going to be a gift from an anonymous man that attended the last vigil. And just who could that be? <laughs> it's you, silly. You raise up some money and get the balance from other big men that you know. Use those magical words of yours. God has decreed a thing and it must surely come to pass. You're so good at that, I think. I have heard you. I think there are possibilities with your idea, but with some modifications, of course. Make it a matrix, the latest. Ah, Pastor Femi. Pastor Peter. We really bless the Lord for your words on giving last Sunday. Thank God, sir. We will need more genuine words of exhortation from the words of God. Uh, it helps us, you know, to keep things in proper perspective, doesn't it? It certainly does. I I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Look, Brother John, you were at the vigil. You saw all that happened. I saw an old woman with a withered hand. Hmm. Obviously, she loves God. I heard her pray hard. I saw faith in her. But she, she wasn't healed. I wonder why. Femi, why do people get sick. Is it true that all sicknesses come from lack of faith or evil spirit? Uh, I, I, I... The Bible presents four causes of sicknesses. Proverb 25, 16. If you eat too much honey, you definitely vomit. There is no evil spirit at work. It's a simple consequence of what enters your body. That means 
natural causes have natural cures. Exactly. The second cause of sickness is the will of God, as revealed in that man born blind. Neither him nor the parent were at fault or sin. Clearly, the will of God. It's true. Uh, but I guess uh, there are some um, sicknesses that are caused by evil spirits. That's the third reason for some sicknesses. No doctor can cure that. Only God. <sighs> yes, I agree. But I'm guessing the fourth reason is sin. Well done. The fourth reason is sin. People don't get ill always. Not even his faithful followers. No. Why not? Why? No one. Even if he has the gift of healing, can heal every time according to when he decides. Miracles come from God, not men. However gifted or anointed they may be, God used Paul to heal people, but he could not heal whenever he chose. As evident in some of his closest workers, he said of Trophimus that he left at Mileto sick, and he told Timothy to use natural remedy for his frequent illness. So, what happened at the vigil? It seemed like miracles were being um, distributed to some people. I mean, to. Listen, Femi. Spiritual display of power is not an evidence that the person doing it is spiritual. Spiritual fruit is the only evidence of man's spirituality that cannot be imitated. But miracle can. The fruit of light is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Even John the Baptist, the greatest of all prophets, did not even show any sign or perform any. Wow. This is like a technical bomb. My brother, I think I have to be on my way. My shop keep calling. Uh, I, I'm doing nothing at home. Uh, can I just um, follow you to your office? So here's my car, the very one I told you about. What can I say? God has been so faithful. Thank God for the man God has sent our generation. You know, I just had to come out some weeks ago when he told us to bring that 50,000 Naira seed faith offering. I obeyed not because I had. I mean, I just had to sacrifice. And here it is. The Lord has done it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Lift your hands up. Blessed be your name, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Wait, place your hand upon these that was appointed. Good day, ma. Ah, good day. How are you? <laughs> fine, thank you. How are you today as well? Ah, fine. My most high secretary general. Secretary general, indeed. <laughs> it's important for me to visit you today and then pay my due respect, <laughs> I mean, to my one and only, <laughs> most I, Secretary General. I wish Peter is here to listen to you and come here. <laughs> <laughs> my pastor, how are you, sir? Hey, hey. 
<laughs> it's 12 already. I'm late. Let me look for my key. Where do I put the key? Oh, I've seen it. Um, um, please, ma, before you go, um, I would like to see um, the Reverend. He's inside. Have a nice time. Okay. Thank you. Mary just told me to come in. Ah, stupid woman! Stupid woman! How many times have I told, told her? Will you get out of my way? You don't feel ashamed at all? Says you, small boy. She went out with her husband for lunch. Now listen to me, you worthless dog. If you breathe out this to anyone, you will wish you were never born. Marriage should be held in honor among all, and the bed undefiled. Fornicators and adulterers, God shall judge. says the Bible. Put that thing down. Put it down. Have I not told you never to quote that thing at me again? Now, will you get out before I throw you out? Get out! <clears throat> Going to do anything, I mean, anything drastic, how are you? <laughs> Don't worry, I know what I will do this time. You wait and see. <laughs> to have you as my husband. You've been so good to me and I truly love you with all my heart. What's all this about, little girl? It's nothing. I'm just happy. I feel so humbled with the way you love me. I feel I'm not worthy of such love. I love you so much. You're worthy of my love. You're worthy. I appreciate God for the fact that He gave you to me. You are a gift to my life. I was so embarrassed of myself on Sunday. I let myself to be carried along with the crowd. Even though in my heart I knew I wasn't truly worshipping God. It's nothing but greed and envy. Can God ever approve that? <sighs> but when I look at you, I see enough strength to stand for what you know is right. 
and then I seems not to have. Everything you spoke about on Sunday, I knew it was true. But I was just embarrassed by what people may think or say. I just wanted to hide. Blessed there. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. His grace is sufficient for the helpless. It is when we lose our lives that we will find that which is truly life indeed. Jesus said, unless you deny yourself, you cannot be my disciple. The Lord asks a lot from us, doesn't he? He doesn't ask a lot. He asks for everything. It's alright. Brother John, I need to see you. It's urgent. Um, if you don't mind, um, I hope I will not be crashing into your schedule. Wow. What a coincidence. I'll be on my way now. All right. No small boy who dares to challenge a president and founder will be believed by anyone, especially when he has no witnesses. All of them know he's already tried to contradict the pillar of prosperity that this ministry is built on. Even if he does say something, they'll only think it's resulting to a slander in his continued rebellion. I've got nothing to worry about from this pest of a pastor, but I'll eliminate him anyway. No one, I mean no one, dear. Talk to me like that. There's too much at stake not to remove him. You'll know who he's dealing with soon. Reverend, Very soon. is everything the matter? How dare you disturb me when I'm communing with the Holy Spirit? Oh, darling. I am only worried about your facial expressions. And this woman, she will also hear from me soon. Sometimes you have a feeling of coming home to a place you never thought you had. That's how Femi felt now at the fellowship in Brother John's house. were warm, all wearing a smile, so genuine and sincere. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's read Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> and I would like us to read responsively from verse 11. I will read verse 11 and then you read verse 12 
to the end of this chapter as we read meditatively Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 11 to the end responsibly are we there? Yes. <clears throat> but Christ came as I preached of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation verse 12 not with the power of gold, or cards, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the ephah sprinkling the... There was no program plan, yet it was all orderly. People shared messages and contributed at will. No agenda. Yet everything was following a divine order. A brother shared from his heart about the love of kindness of God to unworthy sinners for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. A powerful and amazing teaching from a simple brother that was not a pastor. Wonderful. Jesus, keep me near the cross, the precious fountain, free to all our healing strength, flow from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Dear, I pray, your fountain, I'm free to lie. Let strength flow from Calvary's mountain. Oh, Rest beyond the river. It was then that he knew what it was when the apostles first shared the Lord's Supper with the Lord Jesus himself. Dear brethren, our dear brother Wale, who lost his job recently, sends his word that he wouldn't be among us this evening for the fellowship because he had a minor motorbike accident. And we thank the Lord who preserved his life. How will he cope? Does he have any help? I, I don't think so. Moreover, his dear wife is not working for now. But we know that before the accident, he was doing a small business. And in the love of Christ, we can all help our brothers. What do you think we can do? Will you be chance by this weekend yes. so that we can visit the brother? Yes. Okay. Sister Priscilla, when can we arrange that? We sisters will try to provide food stalls for the family and render domestic help in this time of agony and distress. And I know the Lord will help us in Jesus. Amen. Um, thank you. Also, let us all ask of the Lord what He might want us to do for the family. 
possibly giving some money to the family. And whatsoever God lays in our heart, we can bring it on Sunday. But before then, I want us to, to really to make call and visit the family. When the brethren asked Femi after the fellowship how he felt, he didn't know what to say. Words could not describe his encounter with true worship. Nothing can. I've always suspected him. What do you mean? I mean, I, I work with him closer than anyone. Except Suki. You suspected? How? You know what to motivate this man? Is love for money. How does the Bible call the love of money? Hmm. The root of all evil. That is why I'm not surprised. His love for money has plunged him into other lust. As the word of God says, it always will. So, what, what are we, uh, uh, I, uh, what should be done now? Mm, mm. My brother, prepare to suffer persecution for the sake of righteousness. <laughs> I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a man. Domain, or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'm pregnant. <laughs> You are... what? I said I'm pregnant. I thought you were using birth control pills. They aren't 100% effective. Oh my God. Why did you get us into this mess? I didn't exactly get this way by myself, Reverend. If anyone hears about this... And I'll be finished. If you weren't so stupid to, 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 to get yourself pregnant... Don't you call me stupid, you old pig? No one held a gun to your head when you laid with me on that sofa. What the... Don't you dare touch me. Otherwise I'll scream to everyone, the old world, how you impregnated me. I'm sorry, Suki. I'm so sorry. I didn't know what came over me. The news is so devastating. I, I couldn't just control myself. So what do we do now? We have bought the thing. Abort? Wouldn't that be too drastic? Do you have a better solution? Everyone knows me. Your CDs are all over Nigeria and your pictures. We are celebrities. How do we do that? There's a doctor in Lagos. He specializes in sacred abortions. 
You'd be surprised at the number of women of fame who've been to him. But Suki, I guess he doesn't do that for, for free, does he? Just a millionaire. A million? What? We're not paying for his medical expertise, are we? We're paying for his silence. Reputations are expensive commodities, aren't they? We're quite honored to have you as our client. Your down payment of a million naira this afternoon, we are sure a speedy completion of your project. In three months, of course. <laughs> okay. I'll pay you a visit next month to check your progress. Please, don't spoil my surprise by telling anyone about my purchase. I don't want anyone to know about this until I've moved into the building. Agreed? <laughs> Madam, my lips are sealed. And my staff are on the very strict order according to your request. <laughs> you can rest assured, not a soul will discover anything through this establishment. I guarantee. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Bro, John, how did you get this place? Just passing by, and I discovered it's a good place for retreat to know more of God. Hmm? It's beautiful. Quite impressive. So, where do we start? From the beginning, of course. But where else? The first mention of the church it's in Matthew 16. And I would like us to examine verse 13 to 18. Matthew 16. 16. From 13 to 18. Okay, okay I'm there. You see, several things are noted here. No one can become a member of this church unless revealed unto him by the Heavenly Father who truly Jesus is. It is a supernatural work to make him known as Christ. So, uh, what's the significance of him being the Christ and Son? Christ means Messiah, meaning anointed in the Old Testament. It was only the king and the priest who were especially anointed of God. The priest was only the valid mediator between God and men. And king was the only legitimate ruler of God's people. Hmm. <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's continue. Hmm. So when you see Jesus as Christ, what you are saying invariably is that I recognize no other means of acceptance before God and no one else can govern and rule my heart except Jesus alone. Majority of people miss it at the very source. What about this church? Mm. <laughs> that is exactly what Davos 18 was emphasizing. Jesus says, it is my church. It doesn't belong to anyone but him. <sighs> Not to any president or founder? Not to any denomination. Femi, 
it couldn't possibly belong to any of them. Or it wouldn't be Jesus' church again. That's pretty basic. But what does this say about what's going on in Nigeria? Where everyone says, it's my ministry. It's my church. What's really happening? The church Jesus builds is not an earthly physical structure or institution. It is not identifiable by any form of building, nor does it exist in any one denominations or organizations. His church is completely different from the empires of men. It is true. It is true. Yeah. It's not a business or corporation. But, Bro John, how do we Christians fit into this? We believers, we are brothers. We belong to the same family. As found in Matthew 23 7 to 10, verse 8 says, Ye are brothers. It is why. Jesus asked brethren in his church to refuse all kana, all kana titles and religious distinctions. Hmm. 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 Wow. A second description is that of a shepherd and a flock. The flock is, is made up of sheep who follow the voice of their one shepherd our lord jesus john 10 1 to 16. Hmm. john 10 1 to 16. <sighs> but why do we see churches scattered everywhere today competing for for sheep uh, when when Christ says that his church is one flock. Mm. 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 Men have exalted themselves to occupy the position in the church that belongs to Jesus alone. This has created chaos and made seekers of God to become followers of men. The church is a holy place where God dwells in, where He is glorified by His people, offering hope, a spiritual sacrifice to Him, and proclaiming His word to men. Hmm. Hmm. Many churches aren't like this. Are they? No. No. But why? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that uh, Though we have a lot of churches nowadays, they don't talk deep uh, into things like this. The church Jesus Christ is building is described as a bride in places like John 3.29, 2 Corinthians 11.2 and 3, Ephesians 5. 23 to 32 the book of revelation 19 7 to 9 <laughs> really the whole book of songs of solomon teaches to the um, bro um, please i don't want to miss anyone uh, let me switch on my recording device you speak up 
copy that second corinthians 11 2 and 3 For I am jealous over you with a godly jealous. I promised you to one husband to Christ, so I must present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Oh. <sighs> primary factor characterize a bride purity and devotion she doesn't chase after other lovers she has affectionate devotion to only one man she doesn't need artificial stimulant to arouse her affection or express her love for him she knows what their concerns are, and she can freely speak about it at any given time. This is very deep, yet simple. <sighs> but that's not all, is it? No. Real Christians are also servants of God. The most Frequent illustration of what makes a true church is that of servants and slaves. How can we be free by becoming slaves? Obedience to God is the only freedom there is. Every other thing is bondage. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in John 8:34, He who commits sin. Is a slave to sin. It is either we are slave to sin or of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You're right, sir. You're right. Mm -hmm. Slaves are purchased possessions who have no independent right. Their concern is to know and obey the will of their masters. Understanding that is what makes life simple. When our desire to please God outweighs that of the world, then life's decision becomes simple. We said, Femi, there is one other relationship that tells us what Jesus' church is like. It's what is often referred to as the body of Christ. Jesus is also the head of the body, his church. Femi, how does your hand know when to move? <laughs> Why? Just does whatever I want it to do. If your nose is itching, why does your hand reach up to scratch it? I don't like it. I'll just scratch it. Then, does your nose command your hand to do what the nose wants? No, never. Good. Your head sends a message to your hand to come and help your nose. Simple. Christ is the head of the church. He directs and governs all the activities of each member. No member dictates to any other. The nose doesn't rule over the hand. The same must operate in our churches. Are you saying there isn't need for leaders or pastors in the church? No. Our Lord gave us a basis for true leadership in Luke 22, 25, verse 26. First, Jesus' leaders are servants, not lords. They are small boys, not great men. It is the men of the world that act like Lord 
over those they consider to be under themselves. Yes, yes. I understand now. Yeah. Hmm. And a true leader is not an administrator, not lord, or a ruler over an empire, but an example and a teacher. Listen to sermons that made me write so much that my diary cries for replacement. But now, I'm hearing words flowing from an ordinary leaf. And I'm too stunned to write for the fear of missing a word. Ha. Glory be to God. Remember, Femi, before Sunday morning, some pastor go to God, while some go to the library. Hmm. The first one make us cry. The second make us laugh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're so right. <sighs> Someone without transformation. Uh, but. Um, what can we do? Tell me. The work of a shepherd basically consists of two things. Feeding and protecting the flock. Jeremiah 3.15 And I will give you pastors after my heart. We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You can pick that from your Bible. Yeah, please, if you don't mind, I have an idea here. You can go ahead. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Do you notice the NIV uses lead for feed? That is the ministry of shepherding. Feeding and leading. I think that was what happened at the meeting in your parlor. <laughs> All glory and honor to him. So, Brother John, when are you going to begin a church? Church? We are the church. We are the church. We are. With no building. No meeting place. Femi, where did the New Testament church meet? Was it a church building or cathedral? In their homes, I guess. Good. <sighs> but what are you going to do when it grows too big for your parlor? Mm -hmm. I, I guess... Um, you get a hall or a building or what? We just meet in however 
many homes that are needed to accommodate brethren the Lord sent our way. Brother John, what are you still doing at Christ Tabernacle? Huh? It is my mission field. must be kept in the strictest confidence for the entire future of this divinely anointed ministry is hanging in the balance. For some months now, I've been sensing serious demonic activities against this divinely ordained ministry. With much fasting and prayers, two days ago, the breakthrough came. After much wrestling with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I've been sensing is happening eventually came to be true. I found all this in our bedroom. Ah. Under the bed, put there by my wife. <laughs> Brethren, one thing I want to ask of you now is to stand with me against the principalities that have taken over my wife. And that God will show me the way to deal with this and that its glory might be revealed. Brethren, shall we pray? <laughs> Listen to what I'm about to tell you. I never mention a word to anybody. Is it that serious? Very, very. <sighs> Reverend Ben is planning to divorce his wife because um, he says uh, she's a devil. Simply put, she's a witch trying to destroy his ministry. What? Divorce? Witchcraft? How? But I don't believe a word of it. <sighs> a week ago, I mistakenly entered Reverend's office. And I met him in a passionate embrace with his dear sister Suki. I mean, the, 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 the worship leader. Are you serious? Have I ever lied to you? 
No. No, no. No. He's looking for a spiritual excuse to dump his wife in order to satisfy his lust for Suki. Ah. No. This is, this, this is serious. I, I can't believe this. I can't, I can't believe this. Father, I come unto you on behalf of my brother, Brother Femi. Lord, that you will strengthen him at this hour. His body needs to enormous. His body is heavy. Oh God, I ask that you will bestow on him your strength from within in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you will strengthen him. Give unto him inner strength in the name of Jesus. Because your word says in our weakness, Lord, your strength is made perfect. I ask in the powerful and quick in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you will grant my brother inner strength. O oh God, grant unto him inner strength in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see I'm bringing you into my inner chambers because of the gravity of the situation we want to discuss here today. You will be aware there are some things going on around in this ministry for a while now. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel. Yes, sir. You're right, sir. We were both in this office when Pastor Femi entered and began contradicting biblical passages on prosperity. Ah. Um, Reverend, sir. I still believe we have to take things easy with him and uh, we have to be careful with him. And, um... Pastor Chide. Yes, sir. A few days before the nationwide video, he rebuked us for wanting to see the people get blessed. He called all our efforts a wicked plan, a scheme to get the people's money. You should have seen him quoting scriptures and teaching all kinds of heresies. I was really a bit shocked at that kind of rebellion. All of you, I mean all of you, witnessed Femi's misled and misleading ramblings and bumblings about giving in church recently. And you remember the way he burst into my office Recently, too, rebuking me and threatening me with the Bible. It was a shameful display. Most unbecoming. Disrespectful and willfully rebellious. I was shocked at his outrage. But happy at the mature way you handled his waywardness. And we're willing to provide you this one last opportunity to display your loyalty to God and to this ministry which pays your salary. <laughs> this morning, you have a rare chance to warn the people of the curse that comes upon whoever doesn't pay tithes and offerings. Will you take this command from the president and founder of this ministry and ameliorate your ways? Sir, with all due respect, I do not believe that God sends his curse to his true people any longer. As you have always been emphasizing on offerings, tithing, 
during Sunday services. I see it as threat to the people of God. I therefore only refuse your offer. I would rather choose to obey God than men. So, I'm sorry, Sam. I would rather choose to obey God than men. So, I'm sorry, Sam. I can't do it. Not again. I can see no alternative but to regretfully dismiss you from your post as pastor in this congregation. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his milkiest hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread. You will drop your car keys with Mary as you leave. We will announce to the congregation what has transpired here. You are free to go. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dreads way. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world have forced today. His fear of the is a real rest Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for counting me worthy to suffer with you. It's a real privilege. Thank you. Sweeter than honey from out the comb Is all that my hunger and spirit needs I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead Than to be the king of a vast domain Or be held in sin's red there. Oh, you're back. Welcome, there. Welcome. How could you, Femi? How could you? I never told me anything. You know, you see the way people were looking at me in church today. As if, as if I had a Ebola virus. Do you think about this family at all? Please, 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 dear. Blizzard. The best thing I could do for this family is to faithfully obey God without fear. And I suppose you mean being thrown out of your job in a public disgrace is the best way you can do that? Throwing us into abject poverty when we also have the future so secured? 
the scripture warns us that those who long for riches wander away from the faith. Like Ben and Suki. I don't think you wish to hear like them. I don't want to hear like this either. False ears. I can face tomorrow because he leaves all fear is gone because I know he owns my future <laughs> My life is worth I'll live in just because of this. Oh. Now that Mr. Big Mouth is out of the way, there will be nothing stopping us from realizing our dreams. The upcoming nationwide vigil will be a turning point in this ministry and in our lives. How? How? Are you keeping secrets from me there? The divorce process will have been completed by then, my dear. <laughs> we shall announce our engagement at the vigil. You will become Mrs. There. Wow! <laughs> That's all oh, I've been looking forward to. <laughs> I've really convinced her. She wants to be my wife. Soon, she'll be all mine with no worry about her spoiling my plans. You've done all right for yourself, Ben. I'm grateful for your friendship. Mm, it's a privilege, my brother. I wish Blessed can understand this. The whole thing is eating up badly, eh? Yeah. Upset. Confused and embarrassed. Don't worry. The Lord will open her eyes to see what you want her to see. Hmm? Thank you. Femi, I've prayed and I'm convinced that you have what it takes. Even though it might be little, but it's something. I need an assistant in my business. Do you want a job? Honestly, I don't know what to say. Um. Thank you, my dear sister. Your words has been a shooting bomb to my heart. I promise to keep my place as, as a supportive wife and a virtuous woman. Thank God, my sister. Don't forget, her husband faced many conflicts and dangers that we do not encounter ourselves. They protect us from many assaults and evils that they themselves face quietly as God ordained leaders in their homes. For all that, I'll be grateful and supportive of him. That's so wonderful and beautiful. That will make him to have more confidence in God and serve God out of his sincere hearts. Remember, her home should be a place where her husband should run to in times of distress, not another body. Thank you, ma. Thank you.
Honey, you are downstairs. Okay, okay, I meet you now, I meet you now. Okay. I can't believe we are finally getting married. Yeah, oh, oh my, I love it. Come on, in with this. How can you not be sure? We check the whole place, check your bag, even in the car, and you still tell me you are not sure? My dear. I think it's sliver from the bunch. Oh. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's take your office. And so the scripture was fulfilled which says, The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. From what we heard, the court has just awarded 75% of all of Christ's Tabernacle of Glory's assets to Reverend Mrs. Beatrice Aladi as the full and final settlement in the divorce proceeding that is just concluding. We are not sure if the award-winning musician Suki will be pressing charges as to the alleged rape, but we will keep you posted. My name is Lola Bolaji reporting for GCN TV. Why are you cry? <laughs> What's it? Oh dear, I've been so selfish and wicked. In my pursuit of respect. <sighs> Can God ever forgive me? I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Of course I can. My dear, you're my darling wife and the love of my life. Mosu, uh, you have not offended me at all. Can I, can I join you in fellowship today? As John and Priscilla's. Calm down. Don't worry. 
I have not come to harm you. Don't be afraid. I'm not here to harm you. The whole place was shaking when you were chasing me. Um, Why? Why were you chasing me? Why? 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 What have I done? Why? I wanted to catch your attention. That is why I pursued you all this while. And I wanted to change your direction. Jeremiah 23, 16. Please read the words on the card. <sighs> this is what the Almighty says. Do not listen to what your prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. And what about this? First Peter 4.17 For the time is come when judgment must begin at the house of God. <laughs> judgment! Judgment! What's your name? I am Emmanuel. Judge me! Judge me! Wait! Wait! Help me! Wait! And what of you? What will you do? Like Femi and John, why don't you also gather in your home with simple, like minded brothers and sisters? You don't need a building or a man of God to glorify Christ? For where two or three are gathered in His name, He is there in the midst of you. So what are you waiting for? Come together in a simple fellowship of love to remember the Lord Jesus and encourage one another. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. <laughs>